Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another session of our ERB Educational Radio and TV Broadcasting Webinar Series. For today's discussion, our topic would be on the use of educational TV and radio shows in teaching. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. All certificates will be generated at certificate.vibalgroup.com and no certificates will be personally emailed to our participants. Also, for questions during the session, place them on the comment box allotted and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Place your hashtag LearnAsOnePH as our official hashtag to our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal. And now, to proceed with our webinar, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker. Our speaker earned his degree of Bachelor's of its Secondary Education, major in English, Manya Cum Laude from Bataan Peninsula State University, Dinalupihan Campus. He completed his master's degree in language education at the age of 23, and in the present, he is a candidate for the degree Doctor of Education. His love for journalism was developed during elementary and continued until college, and he became the champion in regional and national press conferences and served as the editor-in-chief of Malasimbo, the official student publication of BPSU Dinalupihan. He was also named News Writer of the Year, Opinion Journalist of the Year, and Feature Story Writer of the Year in the National Media Conference in Baguio City, and the first ever regional awardee and national nominee of the 10 Outstanding Students of the Philippines from BPSU Dinalupihan. In the field of research, he won first place as Best Researcher and presented his researches in the National Research Conference and International Conference on Applied Linguistics and Language Education. In 2018, he represented the Philippines in the Young South, Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative in Thailand. His skills in journalism was honed when he studied critical thinking at the Asian Journalism organized by the School of Global Studies, Thammasat University, the Asia Foundation, U.S. Embassy, and Y. Silly, and Y. Silly. Just recently, he became the most outstanding school paper advisor of Bataan, and Region 3 for 2019, and Outstanding School Paper Advisor of the Philippines in 2020 National Schools Press Conference held in Tugigarao, Cagayan. He served as the President of the Bataan Association of Elementary and Secondary School Paper Advisors and Public Information Officer of the National Secondary School Paper Advisors Association, Incorporated. Currently, he is affiliated with Magsaysay National High School where he was awarded with Gawad Dakilang Guro and Most Outstanding Dinalupeheño Teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you Mr. John Adams Dabu Magtanong. And so, hello everyone, an afternoon of grace to all. I am John Edoms D. Magtanong, and at this hour, I'm going to talk about the use of educational television and radio shows in teaching. So, countries around the world, like the Philippines, have responded to COVID-19 driven school closures by adapting remote learning approaches. What are the different modalities that we can use this school year? Let us first watch this short video. Magandang araw sa inyo. Ako nga pala, si Teacher G. 
Handa na ba kayo sa pasukan ngayong August 24? O natatakot pa rin kayong lumabas sa inyong mga tahanan? Huwag mag-alala dahil inisamin ang inyong kaligtasan. Kaya naman may iba't ibang learning modalities na maaaring pagpilian. Una, online distance learning. Ito ay para sa mga mag-aaral na may gadgets tulad ng cellphone at computer at may kakayahang kumonekta sa internet. Pangalawa, Modular Distance Learning. Sa pamamagitan ng makayos na sistema ng isang paaralan, bibigyan ng printed copy ng module ang mga mag-aaral na walang gadgets at access sa internet. Pero kung sila ay may gadgets at walang internet, maaaring i-copy ng module ang gamitin. Tandaan, lahat ng module ay libre. Pangatlo, Television and Radio-Based Instructions At tuloy na nakikipag-ugnayan ng DepEd sa mga TV at radio stations upang maging kaagapay sa paghahatid ng video lessons o kaya ay radio-based lessons sa mga mag-aaral. Kaya tara na! Sama-sama tayong matuto! In case you want to watch more educational videos, you can subscribe to Sergi Maganda Channel. Okay, so now, many countries deployed online learning programs. However, online learning has exposed deep digital divides between the rich and the poor because accessibility in the internet is still an issue in the Philippines. The Department of Education suggested that aside from the online learning and modular learning, television and radio shows can also be utilized to significantly increase access to remote learning. But what is the wisdom behind the use of educational television and radio shows in teaching? The integration of television and radio in education is actually anchored to the cone of experience proposed by Edgar Dale. According to Dale, 10% of what we read, we remember. The retention rate for what we hear is 20%, while for what we see, 30%. 50% for what we see and hear. For example, watching a movie, looking at an exhibit, watching a demonstration, seeing it done on location. And another one is watching educational television. 70% of what we say, for example, participating in a discussion or giving a talk. And then 90% of what we say and do are the experiential learning. For example, doing a dramatic presentation, simulating the real experience, doing the real thing. So Dale's cone of experience is actually a model that incorporates several theories related to instructional design as well as to learning processes. He theorized that learners retain more information by what they do as opposed to what is heard, read, or just observed. His research led to the development of the cone of experience. Uh, today, this is called as learning by doing dictum or experiential learning or action learning. The use of educational television and radio in teaching is in the middle of Dale's home. Are you familiar of these shows? These are actually shown in the 1990s by ABS-CBN. The first photo is a screen capture from the introduction of the show Bayani. The second one is from Hiraya Manawari. The third one is from One Sapana Time. We also have Sina Escuela. The fifth one is Apple Apple. And the last one is the poster of Math Tinik. These are some examples of educational television in the Philippines. What is educational television? Educational television is the use of television programs in the field of distance education. It may be in the form of individual television programs 
or dedicated specialty channels. Educational television or ETV has been utilized in the field of distance education since time immemorial. Uh, basically because of the belief that it heavily influences children in many aspects. TV viewing among kids is very high. According to the research done by the University of Michigan, an average children ages two to five spend 32 hours a week in front of a television, watching television and videos and sometimes using game console while kids ages 6 to 11 spend about 28 hours a week in front of the television. The vast majority of this viewing is of the live television, while 71% of 8 to 18 years old have a television in their bedroom. That is according to the research done by the University of Michigan. Many children's television series are educational, ranging from dedicated learning programs to those that indirectly teach the viewers. Some series are written to have a specific moral behind every episode, often explained at the end by the character that learned the lesson. So it can be entertaining and educational at the same time. And it can also open up new world for kids, giving them a chance to travel the globe, to travel different countries by just watching television shows, learn about different cultures from different nations, different tradition and customaries, and also gain exposure, <clears throat> exposure to ideas they may never encounter in their own community or in their own house. Shows with, with a pro-social uh, message can have a positive effect on kids' behavior. Programs with positive role models can influence viewers to make positive uh, lifestyle changes. Now, let's talk about the different educational television in the Philippines. In the Philippines, back in school year 1995 to 1996, a surge in educational TV programs took place. The said school year saw the establishment of two different series of educational programs. The first one is the ETB of ABS-CBN, or also known as the Educational Television. And the second one is the CONSTEL of PTV4. So this is also called as Continuing Education via Television. ETV series or educational television series initially consisted of the following program. We have Sinescuela, Hiraya Manawari, and Bayani. Sinescuela is the flagship program of uh, ETV series, which tackles a variety of topics related to elementary science, to elementary health, and also technology while Hiraya Manawari focuses on fantasy stories with lesson on good values and also morals. And the, the last one is Bayani, which discusses historic Filipino heroes through a dramatic retelling of their struggles and triumphs. So these three educational shows returned to ABS-CBN last March this year due to, due to public demand. The coronavirus disease or the coronavirus pandemic has led to schools being shut down. That's why many Filipino parents seek out, seek out online resources, applications, and games to try and hopefully keep their children's minds engaged with, uh, while uh, cooped up inside their homes. Because of this, Channel 2 ABS-CBN decided to bring back the said educational television shows. The educational television or ETV series introduced three other programs a few years later, consisting of the first one is Mathinic, we also have Apple Apple, and the last one is Pahina. So Mathinic 
features lessons related to elementary mathematics. So the basic mathematics, for example, addition, subtract, subtraction, multiplication, and division. While Apple Apple examines the proper use of elementary English in everyday conversation. So conversion, uh, conversational English. And the third one is Pahina, which analyzes classical Filipino literature through dramatization of uh, said stories. We also have the Constell from PTV4, which is consisted of the following programs. They have Science Made Easy, Chemistry in Action. They also have uh, Physics in Everyday Life. And the last one is Constell English. Science Made Easy is actually a uh, telecourse for elementary students that features lessons on basic science. While chemistry in action is also a telecourse, but for high school students that features uh, lessons on chemistry. While physics in everyday life is for college students that features lessons on physics and other related sciences. Constell English, which was introduced a few, year, few years later, is a series for high school students that features lesson on English language as well as grammar. The resurgence of educational television program, programs was a big moment in Philippine television way back in 1995. Today, some of these programs continue to benefit teachers as well as students in any way possible and influences a young generation of students everywhere. We can foresee that educational uh, television in this day will again flourish because of the situation that we are in currently. Now let's talk about the different benefits of educational television. First one, television can help a child's intellect. In many studies, researchers have observed how educational programs can aid in boosting children's intellect. Surprisingly, children aged two to seven who watched a few hours of educational television programs per day performed better on academic tests than those who didn't watch it on, uh, who didn't watch television. They also found out, according to that research, that children who spent most of their television time watching shows, for example, cartoons, scored lower than those who viewed educational ones. Uh, it is important, therefore, to monitor what your children are watching and show them educational programs as opposed to simply letting them watch, for example, cartoons or other animation. Second one, television can be a teacher for children, especially in this time of uncertainty. So whatever your child may be interested in, there is likely an educational show on that specific subject. Television is a great way to open your child's mind to a variety of things and help them learn about topics they may not be exposed to at school. So uh, television can provide a supplementary method to teaching children about important subjects, especially in this time of pandemic where face-to-face -face learning is not even possible. Next one, television can show children things they wouldn't see otherwise. Without television, most children would never be able to see amazing things like exotic animals, different cultures, and beautiful cities. So for instance, nature shows and history programs are great resources for teaching children about creatures and places that they have never heard of. They can watch it in, in television. Kids can learn from this type of media in order to appreciate and understand the world around them. Fourth one, television can provide good role models for children. So when, when children watch television, they are bound to be influenced by the characters they see. 
allowing your child or your children to watch shows with characters who promote positive messages like healthy living, for example, and helping others will influence them to make good choices of their own. Now let's talk about the different teaching strategies in utilizing educational shows. First, bridge educational TV shows and your own concepts as teachers. The most direct way teachers use educational television programs is to make a connection between the show and the concept being studied in class. So uh, teachers often find that as they coordinate their lesson plans with visual learning, students are more likely to stay focused and pay attention. Connecting to a subject matter can involve discussing broader topics about your subject area. Next one, connect the student's favorite shows to your discussion. It can be extremely valuable for teachers to understand and learn about popular show shows their students may be watching at home. Often, these programs will have some learning or concepts that teachers can apply inside their own classrooms. So for example, when math teachers learn about the popular characters in a show or in a movie, like, like for instance, Harry Potter, they can use that, those character in a mathematic mathematics uh, problem, like for example, if 9% of the Hogwarts students, student body is late to a meal and there are 450 students, how many students were late? They can also use, use their favorite animation or, or uh, cartoon characters in teaching English, in giving uh, example sentences. And teachers may find that using this teaching strategy will actually help their students feel connected and feel engaged to their learning in a new and innovative way. Third one, we have enhanced educational television's inherent audio and visual value. When teachers use educational television programs during discussion, the relationship between them and their students changes. Uh, a recent study that I read identifies the reality of changed learning and new relationships when movies or, or videos were actually shown during the teaching process. Now, why parents should monitor screen time? Of course, if television has a positive side, as we can use it as an educational tool, uh, it also has its own negative effects to children. This is the reason why parents should strictly monitor what their children are watching all the time. There is also a need to limit their screen time for their own health. Excessive television watching along with prolonged computer use and video game playing are easy habits for kids to fall into these days. And many fear such activities can lead to behavioral problems and obesity. A recent, uh, a recent study Okay, so a recent study actually identifies the reality of the changed learning from, from, from the use, too much use of, uh, of television and video games and computer use. So excessive TV watching can take away the time that the child needs to develop important skills like, for example, uh, their skill in language, creativity, motor, and social skills. So these skills are developed in the, in the kids' first two years. This is a critical time for brain development. They, they develop these skills through uh, play, through exploration, and through conversation. The kids' language skills, for example, do not improve by, by uh, passively listening to the television. It is de developed by interacting with people when talking and listening is used 
in the context of real, uh, real life situation. Second one, excessive television watching can numb the student's mind as it prevents the child from exercising initiative. So television, if used too much, can also stop the child from being intellectually challenged as well as uh, in thinking analytically and using their imagination. Third one, excessive television watching can make children have trouble paying attention to teachers because they are accustomed to the fast-paced visual stimulation on television. So kids who watch television more, more than they talk to their family have a difficult time adjusting from, from being visual learners to oral learners. Or, oral learners means learning by listening. So they also have uh, shorter attention spans. Part one, excessive television watching can decrease attention and cognitive functioning and increase behavioral problems and unhealthy eating habits. In, it increases in, increases in TV viewing are associated with lower language, mathematics, and composite test scores. Uh, children's scores or learner scores appears to be appear to be worse than those of younger children because teens replace studying, sleeping, exercising, and other positive activities with television watching, while younger children, according to study, still reap educational benefits from repetitions provided by watching television. Fifth one, excessive television watching can make children to work less on their homework. When doing homework with television on the background, kids tend to retain less skill and infor information. When they lose sleep because of television, they become less alert during the day, and uh, this results in poor school performances. Another harm of excessive television watching, it exposes your kid to negative influences and promotes negative behavior. Television shows and commercials usually show violence, alcohol, drug use, and sex in a positive light. The mind of your kid is like play. It forms early impressions on what it sees. And these early impressions determine how he sees the world and affect his behavior. So, uh, children who are more exposed to media violence behave more aggressively as kids and when they are older. They are uh, taught by uh, television that violence is the way to resolve conflict as when a TV hero beats up, beats up a bad guy, for example, to subdue him. Now, what can parents do to avoid the bad effects of too much screen time? Media education can actually uh, help kids become less susceptible to the bad effects of watching violent television. So some studies have shown that kids who receive uh, uh, media education had less violent behavior after watching violent programs. So you need to teach your kids to be media savvy. Also, watch with your kids. So if the programming turns violent, you can discuss what happened to put it in a, in a context you want your kids to learn about. And also know what your kids are watching. So decide what programs are appropriate for them, for their, for their age, for their gender and personality, and for their background, and stick to your own rules. Moving on, let's talk about educational radio. Throughout its overall history, distance education has flourished in the spirit of social betterment and integration. Only in recent decades has distance education become a tool for individual or commercial betterment in learning institutions. 
educational radio is the first electronic medium educators use to teach at a distance. So as we cannot do face-to-face -face learning as long as the COVID-19 vaccine is not available for, for, for everyone, our educational system will be conducted through distance learning. Aside from the use of television shows or educational uh, television, radio programs can also be utilized to enhance the learning of every student. Educational radio is the term given to the medium's use in formal learning systems, whether primary or higher education. It involves informal, informal learning processes whereby communities plan, own, and operate their own radio stations. It is typically used as a means for, for course material delivery and often integrated with various kinds of interaction. For example, in classroom, uh, discussion groups, or, or via telephone or cell phone. Quite distinct in nature and serve the needs, serve needs, the two forms of radio are educational radio and community radio. Educational radio provides basic or advanced education and uh, community radio, on the other hand, uh, enables informal learning and uh, social transformation. So community radio typically draws on local cultures and is of a participatory nature, whereas educational radio generally has a national or institutional character. Ultimately, both aim to improve the quality of life of our uh, students or learners. In the Philippines, one of the educational radio programs being aired is the Go Teacher Go. It is a radio program designed specifically for elementary and secondary science and mathematic, mathematics teachers focusing on issues other science and mathematics related to everyday life. So in this program, they also discuss technology and also uh, professional development for science and mathematics teachers. So uh, Go Teacher Go airs every four o'clock to five o'clock in the afternoon every Thursday at um, 1602 DZUP. Okay, so let's move on to the different benefits of educational radio shows. First one, develop listening skills. Radio is about listening, whether you are presenting or just listening to, to a show. These uh, vital skills are not only fundamental in radio, but are also essential for real world skills. It is very important, it is very, uh, it is Im imperative to develop good listening skills because it allows us to demonstrate that, that we are paying attention to the thoughts, to the feelings, where we are paying attention to the behaviors of the other person. This is crucial to maintaining productive relationships and sometimes the only way to establish communication with other people. Another one, improve, uh, radio shows improves liter literacy. Radio programs can enhance the literacy of students. Educational radio can assist teachers and students in learning and improving their literacy skills as well as their language skills. Next one, educational radio extends the area of acquaintance. The child gains knowledge only coming in contact with the physical world around him with which he is acquainted. This area of acquaintance is limited. He, he does not get the scope to enhance his knowledge and experience about the world outside, but radio does this. So uh, it brings the world into the discussion by means of different formats, like for example, description, um, what else? Narration, uh, dramatization, storytelling, also uh, featureization. 
along with on-the-spot recorded materials accompanied with the original voice and the natural sound. In this way, radio extends the area of acquaintance of our learners. The fourth one, educational radio places events of current nature. So radio presents national as well as international events of current nature and thus keeps the students informative. The horizon of their knowledge expands. Radio presents and uh, interprets the events while it is still current and before it becomes history. So as students listen to selected news broadcasts and discussions of, uh, cru of crucial issues, they become increasingly aware of the, of the complex problems they will meet as citizens. Last one, educational radio helps inculcate creativity. So since radio works with voice and sound only, it helps the students in their imagination when exposed to broadcasting. It also acts in stimulating interests of the children and extracting creativity in them. So radio images can be more vivid, more clear than, really, than reality because they rely on personal reminiscence, imagination as well as interpretation. So they can compel at their most effective a greater uh, involvement that's, that, than some visual signals but they demand an ability to listen and a knowledge of work. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, some different uh, tips for creating your own educational video. I also have an example video at the end of my uh, discussion. Okay. So instructor presence is an important component of effective online teaching and video can help make it happen. Educational videos have become increasingly easy to create and can turn a good online class into an engaging learning experience. Video humanizes the online experience by, let, by uh, letting students know their instructor or their teacher as a real person, not an abstraction. Before production begin, uh, before production begins, one must take a step back to envision the content they want to create. So what will be the takeaway of that video for your tar target audience? What is the type of video you want to create? With this brainstorming, you will be, <coughs> sorry, you will be ready to create a great educational video that is not only compelling, but is also substantial. Okay, so first step, learn about your target audience and their pain, uh, and their pain points. You may have a general topic in mind that you want to cover, but you aren't sure what part of the subject is worth focusing on for the video. So what you need to do is find your angle by interviewing members of your video's target audience, your students about the topic. So you need to determine what, what they understand and where knowledge gaps are. So <clears throat> the latter will be, will be the most useful, the, the knowledge gaps, uh, relevant subjects also for your instructional video. Next one. Set a clear learning objective. This is very important. Based on the knowledge gaps discovered during your interview process, you need to set now a clear learning goal for your video. This objective is your guiding light. It will serve as your guiding light for the rest of the video creating process. So every decision you make about the video should serve its larger learning goal. Next one, the third one, pick a video format based on your topic. So depending on the topic of your video, some format, formats will work better than others. So we have here three formats. The first one is animation, 
We also have live action video format. And the last one is screencast. So for animation, animation isn't uh, limited by reality. You are able to express any abstract concept or any abstract idea or out of this world idea with visuals and, and you can use metaphors. So as long as it can be drawn, for example, Big Bang Science, Science's video uh, build, uh, keeps uh, viewers entertained through various realities as the speaker explained the complex topic of science communication. So live action video on, or, on the other hand, or also known as video shot with a camera, depicts life as we see it. So it's the best format for explaining how to complete a uh, complex action that viewers need to see firsthand such as, for example, cooking a recipe or knitting a scarf. And the last one is a screencast. A screencast, or also known as digital recording uh, of a computer screen, is the best format for showing how to use a software or an application. These are the three types of um, video formats that you can use or that you can make. Next one. Set a short target video length. So if your topic is complex or complicated, consider creating a series of short videos to reduce viewers' cognitive overload. So according to micro to micro learning research, we better remember what we learn when we watch shorter videos, no longer than two minutes to be exact. So with this planning, you will know the basic uh, uh, the basic details of your instructional video and be able to begin with the script writing because script writing is also important in creating your own educational video. Next one. The fifth one is tell a story. So people lose focus when they are presented with a long list of facts and figures with information as possible into a narrative and, a viewer, and viewers will have a framework for remembering the content you present. Next one, think in images. Video is primarily a visual medium. So be mindful of how you can explain concepts through imagery and motion as you write your own script. So if you have an idea for, for a visual, explain it as a scene description in your script and depict the idea in your own storyboard. Next one. Prioritize imagery and narration over on-screen text. So uh, trying to process graphics, narration, and on-screen text at once can be overwhelming for viewers. So what educational video ma makers should do is to reduce cognitive load by limiting on-screen text as much as possible. So if you can't express the idea through a visual, you can explain it with a uh, narration or with a description instead. Okay, the next one, signal where the video is going next. Viewers are more likely to focus on your instructional video or educational video if they have a sense of what is coming next. This is another tip. So to make your video uh, easy or, or easy to uh, follow, include visual cues in your storyboard, such as, for example, character expressions, and actions or header text. These are, these are the cues or, or the signals that you can use in creating your own educational video. Ninth tip, add interactivity. Interactive videos allow viewers to click, drag, hover, and complete other digital actions to interact with video content rather than, rather than just playing it. I have here an example. So this is screen capture of an interactive vi uh, educational video. 
So adding this features actually boosts engagement by forcing audiences to stop, to pause, and to demonstrate their knowledge by interacting in the video. Okay, so the last one, choose a video host that fits your learning objective. So YouTube may be the most popular online video host, but that doesn't mean it is the best place for your video to live. So the platform makes sense for those who want to reach a large audience, but you may, you may prefer to host your video somewhere else. There are also other uh, platforms, like for example, Facebook. We also have Dailymotion and other video hosts, okay? Okay, so the next one, I'm going to show you an example of, of an educational video or an instructional video. This is just very short. This is made through the use of an application called Potoon, okay? Okay. Naaalala niyo pa ba ang unang kasangga ni nanay upang matuto tayong magbasa? Kaya halina at ibalik natin ang abakada ngayong panahon ng pandemya upang maging produktibo ang ating mga bata. Ah, alalayan sila na pumili ng babasahing angkop sa kanilang edad at kakayahan. Ba, balansihin ang kanilang oras ng paglalaro at pagbabasa upang hindi mabagot o manawa. Ha, kausapin sila upang malaman ang mga salita na hindi mapasa o maunawaan. Mahalaga ang maayos na komunikasyon sa mga bata. Da, dapat laging tandaan ang pagkatuto ng isang bata ay hindi minamadali. Dadaan ito sa proseso hanggang sa kaya na niyang lakbayin ang iba't ibang lugar mula sa kanyang binabasa. Malayo ang mararating ng isang batang bumabasa. Kaya tara na, simulan natin sa abakada. Okay, so thank you very much to Sir Greg Sangalang for, for this video. This is an instructional video made by Sir Greg. You can subscribe to his YouTube channel. Just search for Sir G. Okay, Sir G YouTube channel. Okay, so before I end my presentation, let me give you a few of my favorite quotations. Uh, that are all about learning or education. So the first one is from Brian Herbert. According to him, the capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. The willingness to learn is a choice. Okay? We should all be willing to learn even though we are we are in this time of uncertainty. We are we are we are all in our homes because of this pandemic, pero hindi dapat doon natatapos ang kagustuhan nating matuto. Uh, kaya nga umaaten tayo ng mga webinar, ng mga online training na tulad nito. Another one, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. We are all lifelong learners. Next one, this is from, from a Chinese proverb. Learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. This quotation is from one of my favorite poets, Maya Angelou. According to Maya Angelou, I have learned that I still have a lot to learn. And the last one is from Sarah Caldwell. Learn everything you can, anytime you can, from anyone you can. 
there will always come a time when you will be grateful you did. Okay, so for some references, you might want to look. Okay, so here are some references uh, related to the utilization of educational television and reuse programs in teaching. You can read some articles on this site that can help you to explore more on this topic. So here are uh, some works related to the utilization of educational television as well as, as well as radio shows in teaching and also in making your own instructional or educational videos in the future, especially for this school year. Because this school year, we really need to learn more about modular learning, about online learning, about using or utilizing and creating uh, educational radio shows and radio broadcasts for our students. Okay, so thank you very much. And I hope you learned something from my discussion that you can use in the upcoming school year. So keep safe, everyone. We learn as one. Okay, so let's have the question and answer portion of this a webinar. But before that, let me have a shout out first. Siyempre sa mga kasama ko sa DepEd, all DepEd teachers and employees. Hello po sa inyong lahat, especially sa mga taga DepEd Bataan. Kamusta kayo dyan? I hope you are all safe. Sa mga taga DepEd Dinalupihan, hello po. Kamusta kayo dyan? And of course, the teachers and school administrators from Magsaysay National High School. Hello, kamusta po kayo? And to my head teacher, Dr. Anne Marie R. Senora Bonifacio, hello ma'am. To my uh, principal, Dr. Glaseria C. Mateo, hello po. And shout out then from Ma'am Leia Salas, yung mga, uh, yung mga teachers daw dyan sa, sa Bicol, hello po. From Ma'am Leia Salas. And also sa... Mga teachers na tita ko na nanonood ngayon, tita at tito ko na nanonood ngayon, alam ko nanonood sila, to uh, Mamang May Diwa, hello, and also to Mama Jo Duenas and Tito Jay Duenas, hello, kamusta kayo dyan? You can send your questions sa ating comment section para if ever may questions kayo, I can answer it. Hello po, sir. Hello, ma'am. Hello po. Good afternoon po, sir. So I would be reading some of the questions from our viewers this afternoon. Okay. Sige. Okay po. So ito po. We have one question here from Ms. Rina Bell Honoraria. Hello po, sir. Ask ko lang po. Do we need to have 12 TV stations to accommodate all grade levels for basic ed? Or do you have any suggestion for scheduling? Okay, for, for educational television, actually the Department of Education is, um, is trying to seek help from, from needs to, to seek help uh, from TV networks para, para ma-show nila yung mga educational television shows or videos na ginagawa ngayon ng, ng, ng DepEd. Pero kailangan talaga natin ng uh, educational shows sa bawat subject area and sa bawat year level. Kasi iba't iba ang competency na dapat i-develop natin sa bawat year level at sa bawat subject. So basically, kailangan natin ng maraming educational shows, uh, ng maraming uh, radio broadcast na, na magagamit natin for the teaching process para, uh, para mapatuto natin yung ating mga learners, especially dun sa MELC na inilabas ng DepEd yung most essential learning competencies na kailangan nating i-develop for our students. Okay po, thank you very much, sir. Let's have the second question po. This is from Miss Beth Karimoana. Uh, sir, question po, may TV stations na po ba for higher levels and senior high school? Salamat po. 
Okay, so for higher levels like senior high school, wala pa rin po as of now sa sa pagkakaalam ko, uh, wala pa rin po tayong uh, television shows na available for senior high school. But hopefully, magkaroon na tayo this August kasi August ang start ng ating school year. So hopefully, we can pray for that na magkaroon na ng ng television shows for for higher education learners or yung sa ating senior high schools. Kasi ang grade 11 and grade 12, iba-iba yung subject subject areas nila. So kailangan talagang mag-establish ng mga educational shows for uh, for DepEd. Okay po, sir. And our last question for this afternoon. Ayan po, this is from Miss Ingrid Tuban. Congratulations po, sir. I would just like to ask if there are limitations or challenges in using TV or radio as a medium for teaching. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Yes, actually. Uh, I discussed, this, discussed that in the earlier part, yung kung bakit natin kay, uh, yung negative uh, effects of television and radio shows kasi meron silang negative effects according to some researches. So, ang kailangan natin is to monitor our children. Ito ay role na ng mga parents. Kasi as teachers, hindi na natin siya mamamonitor. Ang mga estudyante natin ngayon, nasa bahay na lamang sila. Hanggat walang vaccine ang COVID-19, walang face-to-face -face learning. That is according to, to our DepEd Secretary. So basically, ang, ang monitoring ay magiging trabaho na ng mga parents. So kailangan, kailangan din nating paalalahanan ang ating mga, hindi lang ang ating mga estudyante, but, but yung mga parents nila na i-monitor sila all the time para nun uh, yung kanilang pinapanood is na-filter pa din. Kasi, kasi sa mga television shows ngayon, hindi may iwasan na napakaraming violent scenes na pwedeng makuha ng bata na akala niya ay okay lang. Okay, so monitoring pa rin po tayo. Okay po sir. So that's all the questions that we can address as of now because of our time limitations. But then we will try to address all the questions po from our viewers through our comment box. Sir, before we end the session, do you have any final reminders to our viewers po? Okay, so final reminder ko lang po sa ating mga viewer is be lifelong learners. So wag po nating hayaan na, na huminto ang ating pagkatuto dahil tayo ay nasa bahay. Dahil sa COVID-19. So let us all learn from different modalities, from different uh, media. So isang halimbawa dito is yung webinar na ginagawa ng Vibal. Okay? So mag-engage uh, natin yung sarili natin sa mga webinar, sa, sa mga online training, para nun maging productive pa rin yung ating, yung ating um, kumbaga quarantine life. And before I end this, Um, gusto ko lang ding batiin yung ulit yung mga nagpapabati sa akin. Okay lang ba, Ma'am Kia? Sige lang po, sir. Go lang po. Okay. Po. So, hello sa mga nanonood na co-teacher ko kay Ma'am Noe, kay Ma'am Glessy, kay Ma'am Amy, kay Ma'am Marlin, kay Ma'am kay Ma Joyce, kay Sir Pat. Sino pa ba yung mga nanonood dito? Ayun. Kay Ma'am Jovi. Ayun. Sa dati kong teacher, kay Ma'am Med, kay Ma'am Meds. Marasiga, nanonood siya. Hello po. Kay Ma'am Lydia Liklikan, kasama ko po sa NSSPAA. Hello po sa inyo. Kamusta kayo dyan? Sa aking mga estudyante, sa aking mga journalist sa Sikhai, hello. Kamusta kayo dyan? Uh, sa aking pinsan, assistant ko ngayon, kay Zen Oli, hello. Kamusta? I hope you are all safe. Ayun. So maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, Ma'am Kia. Okay po, there we have it. Thank you very much, Sir John Adams, for this very informative afternoon with us. And in behalf of Vibal Group Incorporated, maraming maraming salamat po, Sir. And sa atin ding mga tagapanood ngayong hapon na ito. Magkita-kita po tayo muli sa mga susunod pa po nating sessions for ERB. Muli po, maraming salamat at magandang hapon sa ating lahat.